Hello everyone, welcome to NEET login. Today we are going to start the chapter in the human physiology unit, excretory products and their elimination. How these excretory products are going to form and accumulate in the body? As a resultant of metabolism and the excessive ingestion, some of the waste like ammonia, urea, uric acid, carbon dioxide and even the ions like the sodium, potassium, chlorine, sulphate, phosphates, all these are going to be accumulated. Generally speaking, for every living organism, homeostasis is an ever task. What is homeostasis? The maintenance of chemical equilibrium constant. We should maintain, we mane every living organism is need to maintain the ionic and the fluid balance every time. It's an ever task actually. If any imbalance, it leads to the death of the organism. So in order to maintain this homeostasis, actually the two phenomena will pull up in this play role. One is osmoregulation, other is excretion guys. I hope why we need to excrete actually if all these substances is more than the actually required amounts they'll become toxic so they need to be eliminated out so in this chapter we are going to discuss about what are the waste products how they are going to be eliminated and what are the organs will play a role and how they work and as usual what are the disorders of this excretory system let's start about this guys Let's discuss about some of the major nitrogenous waste which forms in the animals like ammonia, urea, uric acid. As they are the resultant of metabolism but the nitrogenous waste formed in an animal is in order to suit its lifestyle. Why it's forming ammonia in some animals, why it's urea, why it's uric acid. It's based on the physiological aspects. It is one of the physiological adaptation of an organism. Let's move on one by one. Going on to the case of here it is ammonia. If animals excrete ammonia as a chief nitrogenous waste is called as ammonotelic animals. And that phenomenon is called as ammonotelism. Ammonia is easily soluble in the water. And as it is easily soluble in the water, in order to eliminate the ammonia out, the animals need to lose more amount of water. And for whom it's not a problem of losing the water? Obviously aquatic animals, they can lose the water which is excessively entered into the body of an organism. And but the amount of energy takes in the formation of ammonia is also less. Where the ammonia is going to be formed, how is going to be excreted? Let's have a glance look here it is. The deamination means the removal of amine group from amino acids is called as deamination, deamination. And this joins with H plus ions to form as ammonia. And in the case of aquatic animals like uh, fishes, if you talk about them, in them kidneys have a very least role in the elimination of this nitrogenous waste because as the ammonia is easily soluble in the water so majority of ammonia is going to be diffused through the gills and also the skin I mean the body surface and it is excreted in the form of ammonium ion I hope you understood the very important point is here ammonia is is actually how toxic it is that's also important Ammonia is highly toxic, so as its toxic levels are high, it is eliminated in the form of a diluted state in order to lessen that toxicity level. Okay, fine. So, ammonia is highly toxic and uh, is easily soluble in water, so more water is eliminated along with the ammonia and the amount of energy required for the formation of ammonia is less. Next, what are the examples in which the ammonia is a chief nitrogenous waste, which are ammonotelic animals. Many bony fishes, many osteichthys members, aquatic insects. I hope you know well, aquatic insects means no marine insects are there. All aquatic insects are of freshwater forms. And coming to the aquatic amphibians, if you talk about the amphibians, even the larval form of the frog is also ammonotelic because its chief nitrogenous waste is ammonia. Moving on to the next nitrogenous waste guys is a concept here listen carefully what is this here if the chief nitrogenous waste is urea you'll get the doubt why not be ammonia in all the animals why again the deviation in the nitrogenous waste the reason for that is 
as I told that ammonia losing of ammonia is only possible for aquatic animals because along with ammonia water also loses and it is not possible for the terrestrial animals terrestrial animals want to need as much as possible they want to conserve the water so in order to conserve the water what happens means here it is their nitrogenous waste is modified in a such a way to conserve the water in order to suit its physiological aspects and its lifestyle <clears throat> and here if you talk about if the animals whom chief nitrogenous waste not cheap guys cheap if the chief nitrogenous waste is urea those animals are called as ureotelic animals and that phenomenon is called as ureotelism and i am showing here the formula over here it is c double bond o nh2 taken twice why i am specifically showing that the urea formula there in order to explain that in order to bring into your notice that during the formation of urea in the liver by the cycle called as ornithine cycle guys it is a cyclic event happens in the liver in order to form the urea as a product of this cycle and here i would like to mention here it is it is going to consume one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of ammonia so leaving that how many molecules and all in order to say that during the formation of urea which are the ways are going to be eliminated carbon dioxide and ammonia are going to be eliminated during the formation of urea i mean in the formation of urea so which is a site for the synthesis of urea liver so the animals which excrete urea here let us talk about that ureotelic animals let's talk about their toxicity levels and its solubility and urea is moderately soluble and it is moderately toxic and moderate amount of energy is utilized for its elimination so moderately soluble moderately toxic and moderate amount of water i mean small amounts of water is utilized in order to eliminate the urea out example for this is marine fishes here i said the many bony fishes but here marine fishes i hope you guessed it even the cartilage cartilaginous fishes chondrichthys are ureotelic animals and the terrestrial amphibians even our frog is ureotelic animal even earthworm is ureotelic animal and the mammals even human being is also a ureotelic animals whom chief nitrogenous waste is urea guys moving on to the other nitri nitrogenous waste called as uric acid animals which excrete uric acid as their chief nitrogenous waste those animals are called as uricotelic animals ammonia ammonotelic urea ureotelic uric acid uricotelic animals and uric acid is the one which is a least toxicity or high toxicity means obviously i hope already you guessed it is it is a least toxic ammonia is highly toxic urea is moderately toxic and whereas uric acid is least toxic and it is insoluble in water and more amount of energy is utilized in order to synthesize this uric acid guys so i mean to say about here it is uric acid as it is insoluble and uh, in order to eliminate the uric acid out it is it can be eliminated in the form of like a dry pellets actually with a very less or minimum amount of water which is the very happiest phenomenon for terrestrial animals in order to conserve the water example for uricotelic phenomenon animals uricotelism land snails you know molluscan animals reptiles and the birds even our cockroach insects are also comes under the case of uricotelic animals even you can add the word insects you know insects are uricotelic already you learned the cockroach is a uricotelic animal so these are the ways guys of major nitrogenous waste you want to focus on their toxicity solubility and the amount of energy it required for its formation and moreover examples let's discuss about the evolutionary aspects how the excretory organs are evolved in the different phylums of the kingdom animalia if you talk about in a very simpler organisms as i said in earlier sessions itself that then don't have evolved i mean in that organisms it's not evolved a specific mechanism in order to eliminate the waste by a simple diffusion they'll be eliminated out for the first time we come across a uh, organ meant for the elimination of the waste is in the members of the planarians that is you know well those are the 
platy helminthes even rotifers that is also one of the phyla which is called as a wheel animalcules these are you know planarians are the flat forms and the rotifers are the wheel animalcules and in some annelids and the cephalocardita members so i wrote it in a evolutionary pattern of view here it is if you talk about this a protonephridia or the flame cells what is a protonephridia proto simple because if you compare in the case of invertebrates the excretory organs are the simple tube like structures whereas you are observing a picture on the board itself and moreover if you talk about in the case of highly evolved vertebrates in them the excretory organs are a well complicated tube like structures but here in invertebrates is a simple tube like structures the protonephridia are the flame cells why the name flame cells mane they have a flickering cilia like structure which appears like a flickering of a, a flame how the flame will be in the case of how it will be moves in the same way the cilia will move during the collection and the discharge of the waste hence the name flame cells so the protonephridia or the flame cells are primarily concerned with osmoregulation what is this osmoregulation maintenance of the balance of the fluid and ionic balance so primarily concerned with the osmoregulation this very important phenomenon here guys moving on to the next one here the nephridia nephridia as you are observing in the members like annelida they have a funnel shaped structure with which they collect the waste and they have a coil tube like structure called as a body and the pore called as nephridio pore already you come across this in the case of the earthworms type study so nephridia are the excretory organs in the members of annelids and moving on to the next phyla after annelida the arthropoda you know the arthropoda as it is the largest phylum in the kingdom animalia you can come across a very diversified excretory and the respiratory organs in these members so moving on to this excretory organs of this phylum arthropoda the malpighian tubules you know malpighian tubules are the excretory organs in the members of tracheates i mean the insects too tracheates mane who respires through trachea and not only the insects other members of arthropods also show the tracheal respiration that's a different scenario we'll discuss in some other session so here if you talk about here in the insects like cockroach the excretory organs you know well they are malpighian tubules and even other members of arthropoda like the crustaceans mane prawns crabs in them actually the prawn you know well the crustacea member in which you'll come across the excretory organs as antennal glands or the green glands they are they as the located beneath the antennae antennal glands as they are green in color they are called as to be the green glands so moving on to the next higher level of members even in the molluscs and also in the higher vertebrates you will come across the well evolved highly tubular the complicated organs called as a kidneys meant for this elimination and this excretory products i mean filtration and the elimination of excretory products i would like to conclude this point saying that i hope you got my words whomever the excretory organs even this not only the protonephridia the nephridia the malpighian tubules and all these are involved in osmoregulation too as i said in the beginning homeostasis mane osmoregulation and excretion maintaining of fluid and ionic balance is also the prime thing of the survival of the organism guys so this is about the evolutionary aspects of animals excretory organs